What's 89% men and 97% white in one of Germany's most diverse cities? Museum Ludwig. Kings, queens, and emperors have always had a lot of stuff. When they ran out of space in their palaces and churches, they found a museum to show how great it all was. Today, it's the super rich who start museums all over the world. That's the story of Museum Ludwig. Chocolate magnate Peter Ludwig liked art so much, they say he bought something every day. In 1976, he and his wife Irene gave their art collection to the city of Cologne in exchange for a brand new museum with the Ludwig name on it. This was so much fun, they set up lots more museums. Now, decades later, more and more billionaire art collectors are setting up their own vanity museums. But instead of donating their collections to the public, like the Ludwigs, these collectors are operating their own private museums. The advantages of owning your own art museum. You're the boss. You call the shots. Just like in your own business. You decide what the museum collects and exhibits under the influence of a cartel of multinational art galleries and auction houses who manipulate and define today's market. At fancy art fairs, parties, and biennales, everyone sucks up to you and your wallet. Your huge donations get you huge tax breaks while people think you're an incredibly generous philanthropist. If you make the mistake of hiring progressive, inclusive directors, curators, and staff, you can just fire them. Museums think they collect the best and most important art, but often they are stuck exhibiting the art that wealthy collectors donate. As a group, these collectors tend to buy the same artists, driving up the prices of a few selected art stars. Is that why so many museum collections look the same, filled with art that costs the most? Is that why most of the artists are white men? The Gorilla Girls believe art is global boundless and can't be reduced to a small number of artists who've won the popularity contest among dealers, collectors, and museums. Unless the art in a museum is as diverse as the culture it's supposed to represent, it isn't telling the history of art. It's telling the history of money and power. Which brings us back to the Ludwig. Female trouble? Of the 3,496 artists in the Ludwig collection, how many are women? 11%. How many of those are women of color? 3%. How many solo shows have been by women artists? Since 1989, only 20%. How many of those were women of color? One. White walls? White artists? How many artists of color are in the Ludwig collection? Only 2%. Of all the winners of the 100,000 euro Han Prize, how many were artists of color? 4%. All men. How many African artists were given solo exhibitions at the museum? Just one, 12 years ago. Cologne's population is 14% Turkish. How many Turkish artists are in the Ludwig collection? Only one acquired this year. How many have been chosen for exhibitions? One Turkish artist had a solo show in 2009, and another is in the current 40th anniversary show. Changes? What's new and different about Ludwig's 40th anniversary exhibition? There's more diversity than ever before, but the artists are still 69% men and 61% white. Can we call it progress? So, so how, how do you change museums? Keep, keep, keep making trouble, trouble like, like we, we do. do. So the world of artists is great. But the art world sucks. The super rich are controlling the museums, sitting on the boards. Power is being centralized into these few rich people. Like it's really about the one percent. Unfortunately, the art world right now appears to be about money and about the production of luxury items. Billionaires are making more and more and more, and their taste controls which artists get the big bucks and get the opportunities and get the shows. We're planning to sneak around New York with the Illuminator. So we'll be starting out in Chelsea and we hope to then go to the Whitney. So we had this idea to do something we could do really fast around New York 
and put these stickers up. Some of the stickers are about art galleries, about billionaires, billionaire collectors, and about museums. So we wanted to put them up where they belong, on the big galleries, on the museums, and give them out to people, especially so they could do the same thing. And it seemed like a great idea. Call people together, just put the word out, see who comes, and just run around the streets and put these things up and bother people. It's going to be a Saturday in Chelsea. People walking around, feeling really good about having seen all this inspiring art. And all of a sudden, they're going to see the wall above start talking to them. And it's going to say, Dear Art Collector, we completely get. Collecting art is so expensive. We really understand why you can't afford to pay all your employees a living wage. The wall is going to talk to them. Every time we put something up, you know, people would go bananas. Some people would love it, some people would hate it. So we would sort of work in that space. It's really very productive to provoke people to think about things. And we discovered early on that if you could make someone who disagreed with you laugh, you know, you had a hook inside their brain. You know, once you were in there, you just might be able to change their minds about things.